Alrighty. Uh, pretty much the same comp, no artillery. Um, I Typically when I play a medium on Westfield, I, I'll start out in this low town and I kind of watch and see what happens with the rest of my team and where I think the rest of their team are, uh, is going to be at. Uh, people still camp on the zero line from this spawn and people still camp on the K line from, from the southwest spawn. Uh, so that's something that you have to keep in mind. The T-54 actually does really well up in this area. You can sort of do well if you push, like there's this area back here that you can do okay in uh, in a T-54, but like if they counter push that Lorraine into you, that's going to be trouble. So it doesn't look like you have much up here yet. You don't have anything in the middle. The, the problem with not having anything in the middle is that anything that you light over here, like the middle guys are got the guys who get the best shots on them. And so if you're gonna head back there, I'll, I would always take this bush line back there. It's a trap. And then you want to get someplace where you can be pulled down versus this uh, Lorraine. Oh no, 2801, don't do it. It's a trap. The uh, the first shot, the first couple shots, you uh, rush a little bit. That last shot was just bad OMG. So you guys have ran into them there. And see, this is the problem is that when there's no flanking pressure, like flanking pressure can put pressure over there. Flanking pressure can get shots over into the backside of this over here. It's a trap! And so whenever you're in a situation like this where you're up against like more weight than what you have with you, I don't like camping. I don't like sitting there. I always think it would be better to go around and, and start looking someplace else. Because if you're not dealing damage where you're at, then uh, you're not going to... Uh, you're basically just waiting to see what happens over here, and that's going to determine the outcome of the game. And see, this is a dangerous situation because if they have people up in this town, they can shoot to where you guys are at, which makes it very difficult. You can probably wait a little bit for your super pershing at this point because that Lorraine is still going to be clipped. The Lorian seems to not understand that he has a clip. Maybe he's hitting reload after every shot. Nice shot. Get this 1390 down. Just focus on 1375 now. Good. See how this guy's shifting across? They don't really have anything else here. They might have one other tank destroyer that came back on this ridge, but that's not a very good ridge to be on. Especially if your team has somebody over here, because then they can really counter that. You don't want to drive down this K line. If anything, you want to come across this street over on this side, it's going to make you, you're going to be much safer on that side. Shot. And then just come up underneath these guys. See how this JT is coming through your back line? You want it, these guys are ISO'd over here. Like this JT-88 and this JT are ISO'd. And they're also starting to move around to a flanking position on your team. You don't need to flank on, on these guys. It's not going to be that big of a deal. But like if you could take these guys out, then you can reinforce from this side. I don't, I don't think capping is really a, an option here. If you had more than one, you could. It's just, it's taking you too, too long. 
to cause to go all the way around here, then all the way up. And then these guys, they're not going to be anywhere where you can shoot. Because they're already going to be on that other side. Alright, it's up for this guy. Apparently. Dude, t 88 is coming on your right. You need to be aware of this guy right there. Right there, there you go. Lol. Let's get to the side. Good job. JT, watch the JT, watch the JT. More important. So what you can always do is just remember you side saddle, auto aim, look around. Look everywhere else. The the the, the JT eighty eight is not your big problem, right? This is this guy's your big problem. Good job. You could have shot that JT on the way in. You you want to come back out uh, over here and be in this low town over there. That's the only only chance you have, which will use this slope right there. You don't want to be come through this center here because then you have no place to retreat to. You need to get a little bit more wide so that you can shoot down and cover your waffle. At least some of these guys are going to be coming back through here or through back through your base. But you're like spending these large swaths of time where you don't have shots on anything. Your gun is just entirely out of the game and that's, that's a problem. And then let them cap if they want. See how the WZ is pushing through there? Get your shots right here. Yeah, there you go. You don't need to push forward there. When you push forward, you're giving them shots on you. The only thing that's even remotely close to you is that WZ-111. See, that, that's all you needed to do, right? This, just poke your turret over. You can take the T-29, you still got a little bit of time. You don't need to back up so much. Just get your get ready for your next shot. You're you're wasting a little bit too much time there. You don't need to move forward. Okay, now you need to move forward because that WZ-111 is coming up. Don't worry about the T-29. Lol, HE. It's a trap! You're basically hauled down to him, so... Alright, and then go back out here to this A line right here. There's a ridge right there that you can use to spot. You need to, to move relatively quickly. The Conqueror is going to... Oh, the Conqueror's coming around you already. It's a trap! Good job. Run, run away. You want to go to this A line here. Don't beg. It's a trap. No. What are you doing? No. Don't try to take him frontally. No. 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 This. This is not to your advantage. Taking a full health STI frontally is not to your advantage. I, I hope you I hope you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. It's a trap. I, you're letting him close the gap too. <laughs> so what you wanted to do is just run away. He can't catch up to you. You know where he is. 
All you have to do is get up uh, onto high ground, and then you dictate the action, right? You can dictate the the engagement. Um, for some reason, inexplicably, you just sat there and you waited for him. You're just like, yeah, whatever. He can't he can't kill me. And that STI was thinking, all I have to do is just drive straight forward. Even if he shoots me six consecutive times, he's not going to kill me, right? So he's he'll he'll. It's not like he, he, he's concerned about trading one for one for you, with you or one for two with you. As long as he doesn't trade like one for seven with you, he wins, right? So that's not to your favor. That's never, 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 ever going to be to your favor. When you see somebody with full health in a more armored, more, gun, more heavily uh, gunned tank, you don't sit there and you wait for him to, to show up, right? You leave. Like there was, there's no reason for you that, that you couldn't have bailed out uh, and, and gotten away. And then you can try to dictate yourself a, a more favorable confrontation where you're hold down, uh, shooting down on him someplace, or where you can flank him someplace. Um, what you don't want to do is just let him drive straight at you. All right. Um, so there were a couple of things. Um, I you, you played this zero line. That's fine. I, I don't really have that much of a, of a problem with it. Um, as long as as long as you don't camp too much. You guys ended up pushing over here, which worked out for you mostly because they didn't shoot very efficiently they had a lot of clip tanks there they could have very easily just counter pushed onto you guys uh, when it was just you that you and the ru251 and just obliterated you but they didn't they sort of uh, they played really passive right they just kept backing off um, you didn't have any tanks over here otherwise they would have gotten great shots over there um, a, a minor thing is that when you chase the 1390 you went down the k line you don't really want to do that you know that they have tank destroyers coming along this line you want to go down in into this ditch where these guys can't shoot you and then you want to come across here um, and then uh, I think the biggest mistake was um, when you decided to drive all the way around over here and up over there instead of taking two ISO tanks right they had an ISO JT-88 right there and they had an ISO uh, JT right there um, and both of those guys are pushing through your team's flank um, and you took the long way around and went up this way that's that's the, that, I think that was the wrong call I think you should have just pushed this JT-88 while he was ISO'd by himself killed him pushed this JT while he was ISO'd and by himself killed him and then you could have seen what was going on with your team. Maybe you could have saved them, maybe not. It was difficult to say at that point. After that, um, though, though, that was fine. Um, once you killed the JT-88 and the, and the JT, um, you came to this high town. And, and again, uh, I, I think it's better if you play low town, you get you can spot more as they cross into this area by the time you spotted the t29 and the the 5100 they were already starting to go down that slope um you also weren't in an area where you were very protected if you play this low town you can just drop down through the uh through the slope right here to to protect yourself um when you sat right here and got a bunch of free shots on there guys um sort of you kind of were backing up moving forward backing up moving forward backing up moving forward um especially against tanks like that I mean you can just as long as you're hauled down you're at a at a superior elevation um, you'll, you'll be fine just just make sure that you're shooting every single instant that you're reloaded you don't have time to to waste um, and so just make sure that you get those shots on and then afterwards that was that was fine um, I'm not entirely sure why their conqueror didn't kill you there but dumps the brakes and then you you could have won um you shouldn't ask the sti to to let you win i don't see why the sti would be just like okay i'll let you win um you need to you need to figure out what you need to do to win not typing to the enemy asking them what to do to win right they, they're not they're not your friends you know they're not they're not looking out for your best interests. that sti wanted to kill you um and the unfortunate thing is that it, it, you potentially could have gone away and got, put yourself into a more favorable position that that's what, one of the things about being in a medium tank or in a fast tank in general <clears throat> it's not like you didn't know what was coming. You knew that he had full health. You know that he was in an STI. Uh, you knew the direction that he was coming from. You know the speed that he was going at. Um, but you you still chose to wait, and, and I, I think that was really what what hurt you the most, uh, especially at the end there. Okay. Uh, so if we look at the stats. Uh, you did pretty well. You didn't get a whole lot out of your team, unfortunately, but, but that will happen from time to time. It's not really that big of a deal. 28 to 35 is not bad. Uh, the game did go a pretty long time. I mean, it was like nine and a half minutes or something like that. 
Um, I think I really feel like you should have gotten more shots uh, than you did, um, but then it's the breaks, and that's sort of the I. I think it's important to, especially when you're in these mobile tanks, to to make sure that you actually use the mobility. Um, so just keep that in mind. GG though, nice try. I will send you a code if you are on the uh, North American server uh, through the official forums. Alrighty, and the next one is IS6 uh, 9.8 Make sure this still works Mm, it's doing something. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I can play 9.8 replays. I think I played one last week. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty, so top tier, they have more tank destroyers, which is actually kind of nice in Himmelsdorf, depending on how they play it, I suppose. Um, so this type of setup, I don't, I like, I wouldn't take a heavy to the 7-8 line. I don't think that that's really useful against a lot of tank destroyers. Well, you did spawn out there. I mean, you could potentially get a shot down there. I like playing the two line, especially against this type of comp, where you know that you can, uh, where they're not going to have a lot of speed out there. But a lot of it is, let's see what happens with your team. Let's see where your team goes. And you can haul down here pretty effectively against this little ridge there. You're sort of going to be blocking your own shot on that corner with the rubble that's in front of you. So they push their Cromwell to that E1. Their other T25 slash 2 is up there. Their T34. Yeah, I would actually. You can. Don't forget, you can go through the. Um, through the middle area here as well. Because that T34 is not going to be a super favorable matchup given where he's at. So I would try to avoid that side. And that's one of the things that you'll do is just look and see what's there, right? So they're going to win on this side. So it's just a matter of time for you to, to be aware of that. So you can relocate down over here, which will give you better shots as these guys come in. Because you know that they're going to push, you know that they're going to get to the backside. You don't want to be in a position where you're going to be... Uh, like shooting this T-34 is not a favorable matchup for you. Like what's the, you want to go back and count, be able to counter these guys. You want to be set up so that by the time that 110 gets in there, you're all, you're already ready. I will say it once, once more. Um, Facing this T-34 is not a good matchup for you. And then see how now he's driving down here? See, that that's why you want to get set up to prevent these guys from coming in, because you're going to get flanked here. Uh, 
Hi, Seven. Hey, Blue. And so, as these guys push down, you need to get set up. Before they kill your T29, ideally. Don't forget the SU is right behind them. No, the SU! The SU. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look, he's right there. See, now that the SU has fired, sure. No, go ahead and kill the T-34 now. Oh my god. User left your channel. Wait. You need to clear this off quickly. Even if you take a hit from the T-34, it'd be worth it. Just kill him and get out of there. You need to go back and help your guys in the base. So you wouldn't even need to take a hit because your your uh, T thirty two here already took the hit for you. Damn, that T thirty four is still alive. So. One of the advantages of going back earlier is that you can prevent them from having good position. You can prevent them from being in a position where they can screen the cap pretty easily. And then go in through this side right here because that'll protect you from the other way. Otherwise you're going to have to basically push into a kind of a crossfire a little bit. It's a trap! Just be patient. Just be patient. You don't need to go out there until you're reloaded. Anyways, that, so if you come down this line, right, these guys have a more difficult time getting to you. And you have plenty of time. Just drive. You're going to get shot by the T20 by the T29 anyways. So just drive there and get a good shot. Yeah. Alright, that's fine. And then counter push these guys. Bully, bully, bully. Uh, just, just push out there and bully. Straight bully. We don't have time. So, that shot you took was just, it, all you have to do is just shoot basically for, at this machine gun port and, and you, you'll kill him. Uh, but barring that, don't forget, you can bully him. Just You can drive straight to his side and shoot directly into his side. Like, just literally just drive straight there, turn your gun to the right and shoot him. And then you don't really know where the room is, so you gotta be careful. I would actually probably come back around over on this side instead. You don't want to have to traverse across this G line at this point. You also don't want to. Uh, look, they put them on cap. One of them on cap. You also don't want to have to traverse this three line. You'd rather go up the two. You always want to go around the outsides of these things. He's gonna come back out, out over on this side. I'm not sure where you're going. Like you, you could watch watch where they're going on the mini map when when you're driving from place to place. Lol. 
And then you got to be very careful pushing up this three line. That's not a good play. If anything, you want to go out to the two. You never want to push up the three because it's too easy to get shot from anywhere else. It's a trap! And then you can shoot him in the corner. Just push this guy. Alright, and then you can go back towards the Roomba. So what you want to do is just start driving down the three line right now. right? And then what you want to do is you want to cut across through here. And then come in on this side. Because you, you ideally don't want to approach through the three line. You ideally want to approach through the five or the seven. You got plenty of time. So he's probably going to be camping this corner, so make sure you go out at an angle if you're going to do it. So the next place that you clear is this place right here, to the left. No, no, pay attention! It's a trap! No, no, like, don't push him. Don't. Hey. Um, so anyways, oh, darn it. I didn't pause it in time. Uh, so anyways, uh, playing this the 7-8 line was fine, but once you see the T-34 there, there's no reason for you to try to trade it the T-34. You lost half of your life um, just sitting there with that T-34. What you really wanted to do was you wanted to come back, right? They pushed five tanks through this west side and they cleared it out, but you still had plenty of time. You had plenty, 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 plenty of time. You could have been at this point right here shooting this 110 as he tried to come across. You could have been over here shooting him as he tried to come across. What you did though is you let them um, get position in here you let the 110 get up in here you let the t29 and the uh, I forget what the other tanks that they had that were over here get into position where they could cover and screen that cap right and you 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 sent like a tiger or two tigers back or something like that but that, that that's not enough to, to reset the cap they, you need to be out front there um, in order to, to catch that and prevent it, prevent them from getting into good position um, to uh, to prevent you um, um, from killing them easily um, and so the other thing is that once they were back here and they killed your two tigers or, or whatever it was that you sent back um, come back through this lane right here and then go south on this four line um, that will protect you from getting shot from over here that will protect you from getting shot from over here that will protect you from getting shot from over here um, you want to be able to shoot into this lane right there that that's the priority and so whether you come across over here and you go into this corner over there or not that you know whatever it's fine but um, that's the the most shielded area that you can reset the, the cap from um, and then it's just pay attention to where tanks are heading on the minimap. You should have known that that Lorraine was headed north on the five line, and for some reason you were headed south on the three line. And he, it was just like ships passing in the night. Like he went north, you went south, and he just basically drove past you and was able to to kill your jumbo. Um, so make sure that you you watch for that because um, all you had to do is just sit right there, and you could have you could have killed that guy. Uh, otherwise, uh, I thought you did okay. So these be the stat, no, oh, that's not it, that's it. So, uh, you didn't get a whole lot out of your team, although I guess they didn't really. Oh, it's kind of a lowish tier game, I suppose, so, eh. Both, both teams did okay, nothing fantastic. Mm, not bad. If you 
traded better with that T34, um, or uh, in my opinion, not traded at all with that T34, uh, you probably would have been able to carry that much easier because you wouldn't have um, taken nearly as much of a beating from that Roomba. And when you're up against a, a Roomba or a tank destroyer in general, when it's even tier like that, you don't want to ever be in a situation where you're just trying to outslug them. That's that really doesn't work to your advantage. He's got a better gun. He's got better DPM, um, and in that case, he also had more health. Um, so you need to figure out a way where you can kill him without trying to to outslug him. It's like it's like trying to outpunch Mike Tyson. You know, that's 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 not. A, a, a viable plan. GG, nice try though. I will send you a code if you are on the North American server through the official forums. All right, the next one is LTTB on Moravanka. I used to play a lot of Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Alrighty, so tier 10 game. You got a slightly faster comp, not by a whole lot. One of the things I like doing in Moravanka is playing this hill to start, um, at least to get an idea of what they're going to send down here. T49 will be the biggest threat to that because he can derp you. But it wouldn't, wouldn't be like a super easy shot. Um, and it gives you a lot of intel in terms of what they're going to send down this way. And if your team's on the ball, they can get shots down this 8 line. Oh, go! Drive forward! The pedal on the right! Oh my god! So you don't have any scouting on the weak side, that's something that you can potentially do as well. Which basically just entails doing a loop up onto this ramp right there. So what you're doing right now is just going behind your heavies and mediums. And what I always try to emphasize when you're playing light tanks is don't don't play a light tank like a medium tank. It's not it's not a medium tank. It's, it's never into your to your advantage to play it where you're looking to try to get shots against heavies or other mediums or things like that. So you have to remember that it's only going to be a matter of time before you lose that other side because you have nothing there. Luckily, see how their team is like captured back here? That's not a good sign for them. And you got to be careful right there. That's, it, it's still better to spot them through the middle at this point. So they're through on this other side. I'm not entirely sure why your T92 stayed out there, but that's a break. 
So you need to get away from your team. You need to get out here so that you can spot for them as this guy as these guys come across. You've got no map control. And remember, there's a lot of ridges that you can play back here to spot these guys as they come in. I I don't like when people allow themselves to get boxed in like this. It's usually a bad sign. Don't forget that T-54 is still on that A line. He can shoot at you. Like that. Which is one of the reasons why getting out here is better. You can get shots on, on these guys over there. I think you're spending a little bit too much time too close to your team, basically. Lol, that Russian accuracy. So these guys are pushing out, but they're still going to be susceptible to that A line right there. So you got to try to try to cover that for them. So you want to use your speed a little bit more. Again, I, I really feel like you're just playing this like you're playing a medium tank. And uh, really, you're not. And you're allowing your guys to sort of just die out here. If I were them, I wouldn't have tried to take map control back through that middle. I would have taken it through the A line. But you're basically driving around looking for shots like you're, like you're a medium right now. And this E100 is going to bully your 140 because of it. See how you got more and more guys going out there? You could be helping those guys instead of sniping. Well, at least you got that bit of map control back. Somehow. They had good position there. I'm not entirely sure why they weren't able to, to make that happen. So pretty much this entire game you've been hiding behind your team. You need to you need to utilize the speed and the camo and the fact that your gun isn't super fantastic a little bit more for your team. Instead of relying upon them to spot and occupy, you need to be doing that for them. So they're counter pushing through here. You should be able to see that and you should get out at least equal with them. What you're doing is you're baiting your team. And then so coming down through this middle is not going to be a, a good play. What you want to be able to do is come around and help support these guys, the, the guys that are actually being aggressive. You can't stop heavies from pushing into these guys. Like if this IS-7 pushes, there's nothing that you personally can do to stop that, that IS-7 really. And so this is not a very good position because if they come through the middle, they can pick you up pretty easily. You'd rather go back and play through like this K line, for example. So you always have to think whenever you're a light tank, what am I going to spot if from the position that I'm at, and where am I, you know, uh, when am I going to spot him? Like a lot of these positions that you're taking, you're either not going to spot him, or you're going to spot him when he's way too close for you to do anything about it. Luckily, their team is also camping. See how your team now? See how your team now has all the map control because their team 
well they allowed you to get out on this side right that was a that was a major flaw but now you have all the map position in the world so it's important to to actually use it and to get to positions where you can play but most of this game you've been behind your team You can switch to HE there. Yeah, so getting that IS-7 down is going to be the trickiest part, because if your teammates can't do it, you're probably going to struggle a bit to get it done. You know the waffle's still there, you need to try to pick him up. There you go. You can still load HE for that guy. I mean, that's what that's what it's there for. So at this point, now you need to be a little bit more conservative. Because you don't really have any big guns left, just the 907. So you need to kind of be around that 907 because you need to keep that 907 alive. Because once that 907 dies, you guys are pretty pumped for killing that IS-7. And again, you can load HE for these guys. The, the waffle is uh, not a very strong tank. So playing this position where, here where you're at right now is a good play. Try to get them as they come back. This T-71 can spot them if they come out the north. You need to try to protect your 907. And by that, all, all that really means is that you need to spot things for him. right? Your, your gun is not as valuable as his gun. Especially if he's going to put cap pressure on, you want to screen. You want to be someplace you can screen. You always got to think, what am, I, what am I spotting here? Is this E-Force going to warp out over here? No. This E4 is going to drive across through here, right? He's either going to drive through the middle or he's going to drive around on this side. He's going to drive around on one of those points. And so this is a dangerous play because IS-7 is fast enough to get back to the base. And then you need to keep moving because that E4 is also on the way. So you can keep that the house between you and the IS-7, but you know that the E4 is going to get shots pretty soon as well. And then the gig is up. Just bail. Just bail. You're not going to cap this. Just bail. Run! Run! Lulz. Lulz. It's important to identify, you know, to, to not be married to the cat. Like, it, it was very obvious that the IS-7 was going to be able to get back to, to reset that cap. So that's why you want to be able to screen and detect them a little bit further out. So you get some free shots, you can make that determination of, of whether you're going to be able to push them or not. And you want to try to keep these guys lit, right? You want to try to get yourselves on flank so the T-71 is on one side and you're on the other side. So this T-71 is doing a good job of lighting them on his way in, so yeah. Looks like the T-71 is moving forward to pick him up again. No, just get your shots. 
No, move forward to get your shots before he kills the T-71. Oh my god. Aim drive wheel. Aim drive wheel. Drive wheel. No, drive wheel. So you never want to aim in the center of the IS-7 if you can help it. I, I would aim towards the back a little bit more. Alright, that works. So that was actually your most difficult problem. So the E-4 is probably still headed west on, on this lane. So I would actually probably go all the way around through here and try to get to the artillery. You can still see if you can find him on your way out. But you always want to be on a ridge where if you do spot him, you can drop down to one side. Right, so surf this ridge right here, and then just drop down if you spot them. You took you took way too conservative of a loop there, and you don't want to poke up because poking is not not to your advantage there. Yep, and then just run away. Just there, there's no reason for you to engage him there. You know where he's at, right? So you've got an update. So just go ahead and bail out, and you can go and kill the artillery, and then you can come back. Like there's no reason, there's there's no absolute need for you to engage this E4 right now. No. And then so you want to be careful. You want to put this house between you and the uh, the GWE, which you assume is back down in this area. Good job. And there you go. I'm just go and chase him down. All you got to do is not ram him, and you'll be fine. He's going to be in that southeast quadrant. Not, not sure what you're doing here. Uh, so what you don't want to do is stand there and uh, do nothing. You, you, you definitely want to be on the move. Sitting there is definitely to his advantage. All right, so that was fine. Um, I felt like you spent most of the uh, of the game playing like a medium tank. You farmed a lot of your tier tens, which I didn't. I I, I didn't like that. I, I I don't like seeing light tanks sitting behind bigger guns. You know, trying to conserve, trying to deal damage, trying to do that. That's not your role. There was a lot of of, of times where you, like near the end when you were actually lighting that that waffle four, you could have done that and saved your 50B. You could have saved um, your, I think it was a T-62 or 140 that I pushed out here. Not saved them, but you could have um, helped them uh, more than just sitting in the back. You spent a lot of time sitting back here, uh, not doing a, a whole lot. Um, and then uh, there were every time your team shifted, particularly when your team took back this area right here, um, which was a, a key moment in the game for them to be able to kill that E-100 and take out that T-54. None of their team actually reinforced. None of their team actually pushed on, onto the side either um, but you were basically a spectator while that while that happened and that was a key moment in the game you don't want to be a spectator in key moments of games you want to be out there helping your team if at all possible um, and that's the same thing when your team started taking back that map control when they started taking back the west side you were like still driving around back here in this northwest quadrant you were the furthest person from tank from the enemy tanks for most of the game and that's not really how you want to play light tanks uh, especially if your bigger guns are being aggressive or are taking l l ground. You want to be up there at least with, you know, even with them in terms of, of positioning. Uh, yeah, and then uh, at the end, that was fine with you and the T-71. Uh, I would try to shoot the track to try to preserve your, your T-71 if you can. Um, and then you kind of took a dice roll in charging the E-4. I think you could have just bailed away from the E4, take, make sure you take out the GWE first, which, you know, we were fairly certain he was in this quadrant anyways. Um, the E4 doesn't have the speed to keep up with you, so you go attack him, and then you can deal with the E4. But it worked out, so that that's fine. 
GG. And so if you look at the stats, uh, 4k damage, which is pretty good. I mean, the LTTB uh, has a little bit of a pew pew gun on it. It's, it's not like a super... Uh, uh, it doesn't really have super DPM, uh, but it's got reasonable pen on it. Uh, it's got reasonable accuracy. The only bad thing about the LTTB, it doesn't really have very much gun depression, so it's kind of difficult to wield sometimes. Um, these two Russian mediums pretty much won the game for you by counter pushing out um, and being able to beat that E100 T54. Um, without them, you would you would have lost this game. But GG. Um, also, you were helped by the fact that their team played really passively. Um, they once you're once you guys started clearing out of the the East Forest when you're. Um, 907, 140, and 50B went to the northwest quadrant. They could have counter pushed through the east, but they didn't. 